So, I mean, having a PhD in biology, you know, how does it really help you, I guess, in terms of, you know, how you sure. think about medical device marketing? You know, I, 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 first and foremost, I think what you get with a doctorate, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that everybody needs a doctorate um, to do this, but what you do get is kind of a, a, a method to think, and it provides you with, um, again, lack of, a sign, lack of a better way to think about it, a scientific method to put any problem in front of you and to work through its, um, through its challenges. So I think that in itself, it kind of taught me how to think very deliberately and methodically. But also, here's some really things that you wouldn't necessarily think of. I, I kind of get some credibility with doctors when they find out that I have a doctorate. Now, then we start talking about a little bit what what I did. And so far, you know, it's so far from removed from what I used to do or what I do now that it's hard for me to, like, conjure up and tell them the details. And some of them are asking serious details about what I what I did, you know, in the laboratory. But it does give this sort of foot in the door um, kind of um, kind of credibility that is really nice. And often we get very technical, medical, and clinical related to the field that I was in um, when I was um, when I was doing different fields. So so I, I think that's that's for sure one one thing. Um, I think it also lends a lot of assistance when I'm interacting with um, engineering, clinical, um, the medical units in any business. Uh, they all know that I'm a bit more technically minded, analytically minded. Um, and so that kind of allows me to either participate in some of those activities or at least have a more in-depth conversation with some of those activities. Sometimes they come ask me for advice, even though I'm, you know, I'm still the, the marketer. So I give them the, the, the high view, but I think that's certainly um, some of the things that I've um, that I've touched on. I think the other thing that I would bring up is is marketing in itself is kind of the the hub of the business, and you got to know a lot of aspects of the business. I mean, arguably there'll be other there are other uh, business units that would say that they're the hub, but really I've I've been exposed to this long enough where marketing really is. And um, that is important too, because you get exposed to all these different parts of the, of the business, and you got to collate all kinds of different um, in different inputs into into making a coherent plan. Yeah, I I completely agree with you, and and I do agree on the troubleshooting aspect of um, you know having a PhD, and and I it's funny to me because when I think about sort of exiting you know, the, the sort of exit criteria for being a PhD is you finish your dissertation process. And I feel like I did the most troubleshooting there um, for sure. because, you know, you sort of worry, at least I had a background worry, like, you know, don't put in all this work. And now essentially I just got to make sure that, you know, at the end of the day, that the, 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 the dissertation process results in something. Um, yep. I don't want to wind up with a, uh, a very nicely written paper that goes nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> so, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So what what really motivated you to transition, you know, from life sciences con consulting to, to product and market management? Sure. As a, um, as, a, as a consultant, you get exposed to all kinds of different aspects of a business. So you, you don't, you don't really get to choose that much. We were very specialized in the fact that we did life sciences, medical device, a lot less pharma, but a lot more medical device. And most of the time, the, the folks who were hiring us were um, marketeers. And I remember I was really naive in <laughs> the beginning. Um, and I remember like one marketeer, like, you know, he, he, he laid out what he needed and and i was like how do they not know like this is like core to their business <laughs> and little did i know you know, you know 10 years later they just simply ran out of bandwidth like they need consultants they needed consultants to do like these side projects that they always need for those additional inputs and and i didn't realize that of course until i was i was sitting in that seat and so i've had it was it was just a sort of a funny sort of full circle kind of story. But I, I liked where, again, th them being the hub of the business, being exposed to all kinds of different parts of the business. And I'll be honest too, there's a heavy analytical, heavy research 
um, component to, to marketing. So like any good marketing plan starts with market research and knowing your market, um, developing those hypotheses that um, not only come from the research, but even prior to that. So it was in my in my mind, like they're they're very similarly linked as as we were talking about before, some of those skills that you get as a PhD, they they really apply to all kinds of different you know all kinds of different roles. Yeah, yeah, I do find though that there. I mean, just a quick aside as well that I find that there are a fair amount of people that either go for you know they get an MD or a PhD, one of the two, and then they yep. sort of say, hey, look, I want. Um, business education as well. So they'll go back and get an MBA as well. I, yep. I, I tell everybody, look, I, t- I took the longest path in my education possible because each time I sort of said, that's it, no more. Um, so I got an associate's degree and no more. And next thing you know, I'm getting mm-hmm. a bachelor's. And then of course, you know, the group of people that I got my bachelor's with, they said, you know, hey, look, they're all going on for their MBA. And so why not? You may as well join in. And then <laughs> uh, I fell in love with education after getting my MBA and just was like, look, I think whenever I get older, whenever I decide that I don't want to do this kind of thing anymore uh, and and run the rat race anymore, maybe I could go teach somewhere. Who knows? And um, so that was kind of my my path and process. It was not, it was not the traditional sort of, you know, hey, look, I'm going to go do this for a very purposeful um, right you know, thought, thought provoked, uh, reason. I instead sort of took this long path and just said, you know, Hey, look, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And then that's it. No more. Um, There were many times where I was sorry to cut you off, Don. There were many times where I thought about an MBA too. I mean, I mean, it, it come, it came up all the time. The more I worked, the less it became necessary because I was picking up skills you know, take a week course here at Northwestern, take a course here, have some internal, um, some internal um, programs that some companies did uh, that put on that taught you how to write a marketing plan. So, and when you take advantage of some of those things, that you can really learn a ton. Learn a yeah. ton. And I so do I'm, think, I'm totally with you. Sorry. I do think more than anything. I mean, even more than I don't know formal formal education. I think comes into play whenever you're initially trying to get that start and people are establishing kind of where are you and can you, can you do these, these sort of things? I think certainly credentials help, like you said earlier, but at the same time, um, immersing yourself in doing the thing that you need to do, whether it's marketing or, you know, being an entrepreneur or building startups or whatever, whatever it might be, immersing yourself in that. Um, honestly, turns out to be a better education than anything books can provide. Because I, I think life experience is, is a great teacher. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And hey, just just add one more thing that was as I was thinking about us. What got me also interested in in marketing? I I have seen the leaders in some of the big companies. They typically, and when I'm talking leaders, I'm talking officers. I'm not looking to be an officer in a, in a Fortune 100 company or Fortune 50 company, um, but at some point, that's that's sort of the the end goal for me is um, to head into that direction in a full leadership role. But it it they often come from sales and marketing, and so so and again, I think because those two spaces, and there's maybe one other, but we won't mention um, but those two spaces often. Um, those folks go into those those greater um, uh, roles where they can influence the company. Couldn't agree more. So if you look at your overall career, what what was a pivotal moment or project for you that significantly shaped your career tra- trajectory? Sure. Um, you know, I, I've been a lot, I've been the lead or I've been significantly involved in lots of um, product launches. Um, like, like many though, like there's not, there's not that time in a, like if you, if you think to any kind of like inspirational movie where like the, the protagonist is sitting and agonizing over his desk or their desk and they've got this problem and there's boom, there's some breakthrough. And you, I always wanted one of those. I never had one. I always wanted one, um, but it never happened. So it's really just sort of a grind, a concerted, methodical effort over time that I think has been um, the the only the only major teacher. 